Vanta started not as Vanta, but as a startup in search of a problem. And there was a kind of dark couple month period of wandering in the desert, building a bunch of software that no one wanted. We were sort of like going technology first and saying, oh, you know, AI is, is new, so we're gonna go build AI tools. There was the microphone that records your meetings and transcribes them and dumps them into Slack. Were you like trying to figure out if there's some like AWS drop shipping thing you could do for e-commerce merchants, but we didn't know anything about e-commerce or drop shipping, so that didn't get very far. It was like, oh, can we go build another team collaboration tool? Our answer was no, <laughs> but that, that was a, a exploration for a bit. We built something and then didn't really know what to do next. Like we'd kind of then walk around all of our friends and say, do you want my tool? Like, do you want my product? We sort of realized we were like, ask, we were like the children's book. Like, are you my mother? <laughs> we were like running around and asking him and like no one was our mother. And we realized we just kind of approached it wrong. Like we should have gone problem first versus technology first. What we did was we decided, hey, we should stop building because we just keep building things that we think people want and it turns out no one wants. And we should go find a person with a problem. It started with, you know, friends, former colleagues, like talk to anybody who is related to security from a, you know, security engineer at a multi-billion dollar company to like a CTO of a 10 person startup. And it was sort of just take any conversation, ask them a bunch of questions. And at the end ask, hey, is there anyone else you, you can think of we can talk to? And then just rinse and repeat that for probably two, three months. It's not a real metric, but the, the sort of fuzzy metric was keep doing this until you have the conversation and you sort of knew 80 to 90% of what the person said back to you. There was probably a little that was new, but very little of it was. And you sort of, I think at that point, the thinking was then you have a mental model of like how a startup CTO or a you know senior security engineer like thinks about the world. And then you can simulate that in your head and make decisions. And so it sounded like we had started to find people with a problem. There was part of the job that they really liked and part of it that they didn't. And so we went deeper and asked more about the part of the job they didn't like. And so we learned about security questionnaires, which are these like long Excel spreadsheets of questions like, do you encrypt customer data at rest? What encryption algorithm do you use? Just like times 600. And we learned about compliance audits, which took, you know, hours and hours and months of work and planning and hundreds if not thousands of screenshots being sent between the company and engineers and external auditors like accountants to show things like the encryption algorithm. You kind of looked at some of those processes sort of as engineers or people who build products and thought, you're using screenshots out of AWS to show if your data is encrypted. Like this just like literally doesn't make sense, minus being, you know, this poor workflow and unreliable. Why ask the person to provide a screenshot to show this? You can just go ask AWS. And that that seems just like actually really, I mean, kind of wild problem, but this like rich seam that we kind of kept going down and down and Vanta eventually came out of that. We're pretty adamant about not coding until something somebody really wanted what we were building. We also didn't really know what to build. We just knew this was a problem. You know, we had this kind of thought experiment of like, well, what if you could get a small company a SOC 2 audit? Like then they could kind of be enterprise ready earlier and attract larger customers and maybe pretend to be bigger than they are, which is sort of the name of the game when you're a small startup. And so what we did was we approached kind of a growing startup segment at the time. I think they had like 250 people. Decided to pitch ourselves as SOC 2 consultants and said, we will like write you a roadmap to getting SOC 2 with all of the detail. And so that's what we did. Kind of spent two weeks talking to all the engineers, figuring out like what should segment SOC 2 be versus all these other companies and, and sort of produce this like spreadsheet roadmap. And the test for that prototype was do they believe us? Like, do they actually, like, is this useful? And I think, you know, the honest answer now with a couple years in hindsight is it was really useful because they didn't have anything else. You know, proper consultant or someone with industry experience would have produced something better. But in the absence of that, as a like first cut, it was useful. So that was exciting. And so our next milestone was like, well, how replicable is this? Because we don't actually want to run this consulting business, especially not for zero dollars. And so then we went to another quickly growing startup front and sort of made them the same pitch. And so at that point we were feeling good because we're like, wow, we may have figured out this thing and you know, people seem to want it. I wonder if there are more companies like this. And so we were thinking about trying to find another couple companies and actually literally what happened is we got an email from kind of a former 
Dropbox colleague who said, you know, hey, I was at a such and such's housewarming party over the weekend, and I hear you've become SOC 2 consultants. I'm like very concerned about your, you know, mental well-being. We should probably go like get a drink and talk about that. But before we do that, can you come help the company I'm consulting for? get a SOC 2 report. And at that point we were like, oh, this is, you know, unclear how this happened. Maybe people in San Francisco should have better housewarming parties, but like, this is great. Uh, and that's when we started turning our spreadsheet into JavaScript, literally. And what actually happened is the only thing we'd really built was like the integration with these tools and then the like customer facing UI. And so what would happen is we'd integrate with the tools, we'd spit out just like literally the raw JSON of how everything was configured. And then you'd go through and read that and like control F through that and then write the report like manually. And that would, you know, say you pretend it took a day. Uh, that was like, took many hours it's somewhere. Anyway, and the report would be up the next day. And, you know, they would think it was done automatically and that wasn't the case at all. But we kind of didn't want to tell them we had written it because we didn't want them to be too nice to us. If you had done a market size, prior to Vanter, kind of when we, so it's not my favorite exercise, when you do them, you know, I think my best estimate was there were like maybe a thousand SOC 2s done in the world, right? And at the time they were done for, call it a hundred thousand dollars, but you still do that multiplication and you're like, this is not a market. And there was a very real period where we we're like, hey, maybe this is a, you know, like bootstrapped, very profitable over the time, kind of like small business, but not anyway, a very profitable one. And you, you shouldn't take venture funding. But then we kind of thought, well, these SOC 2 reports, if you talk to a company that just got one, they will tell you it just transformed their sales process and like transformed their relationships with customers. You know, they'd almost talk about it as, as magic after this like very long arduous process, but this like sort of magical document that they were then able to use. And I think that gave us a lot of confidence and like, oh, well, if, if smaller companies had these, wouldn't it be almost even more magical to them? And so a big part of the thesis was, can we, kind of lower the cost of getting these reports for a smaller company and then more smaller companies will get them. And we thought about lowering the dollar cost, but it was actually much more about all that effort that went into planning for it and going through the audit and collecting all the evidence and was like, well, if we can just, you know, literally like not have this take a whole engineering team's time for a year, that is like so much of a cost reduction. Um, like forget the dollars, the dollars are almost a rounding error on the engineering time. And so pretty early on, at least it, it kind of made logical sense that small companies should get SOC 2s. Founders, especially founders who don't have go-to-market experience, which I didn't, the instinct is to hire someone to do sales because you're not good at it. And I understand, like I was not good at sales. My joke prior to Vanta, the last thing I sold was Girl Scout cookies, it's true. But I think kind of founders have to do that early sales because what it is is you're like, putting yourself in front of potential customers saying like, I you know, built this thing that is supposed to do X, Y, and Z for you. Do you like it? Does it work for you? Those conversations are so helpful to feed into like what you're building, how you explain it, how you explain it to the next person. You also wanna learn the sales skills over time, but you can actually get away with a lot. Um, like just being curious in, in the customers. You know, I think it's like the market wins, the founder doesn't win. If you choose a market that doesn't exist, it sort of doesn't matter what happens afterward.